Well, good morning, friends. It's Friday, 7.30 a.m. in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is Morning Devotions. Thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Tim. And on Fridays, we do this little ritual that we call Friday Socks. So we're going to show you the socks in a little bit. But let's talk about the word this morning. Where have you put your hope? Where have you put your hope? I hope you haven't put your hope in men. Because men are broken. My hope is in the Lord. And my hope is in the fact that God can do anything that he pleases. So I want you to remember that. And what is the great hope of Christianity? There is a great hope, and the great hope of Christianity is that Christ is going to return for you and I someday. We don't know that day. Some of us will uh, cease to be in our bodies here on earth before Christ returns. As many who uh, uh, many have gone on before us, many followers of Christ, and uh, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. So we know that in those moments that we pass from our earthly existence, we are immediately transported into our heavenly home to be with Christ. Now there is a famous verse that I want to read to you out of Thessalonians. Let me read it and then we'll talk about it a little bit and explain this verse a little further. This is what it says. Now, uh, this is 1 Thessalonians 4, and I'm going to start with verse 13. It says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who've died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. This is often a verse read at funerals, that we as Christians do not grieve the loss of, of a loved one like those who are unsaved and those are in the world those who are ungodly the way they grieve because as far as they're concerned this person they will never see again this person has disappeared and gone forever but the Bible doesn't preach that because the Bible says that we're eternal beings that we're never gone we are changing our address from time to time not only physically while we live on the earth but in our spirits, when we pass from this earth, we change our address to heaven. We've gone somewhere. It's a long ways away from this earth, but we have not disappeared. No, we still exist, but now we exist in heaven. Let me go on to read this. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns... God will bring back with him the believers who have died. When Christ returns, he will bring back with him the believers who have died. Now remember that because we've got something else to read here. Starting with verse 15, we tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. First, the believers who have died will raise from their graves. Now, didn't we just say that those who have died in Christ are coming back with him? Yes, that's what it says. But then it also says the believers who have died will rise from their graves. I believe this portion of scripture is explaining the fact that there's going to be physical evidence for the people here on earth that something amazing has happened because graves are going to break open. We know that when Christ died on the cross, that's something that happened then as well. There were graves that were opened and people whose bodies came back to life. But our spirits are already with Christ. But there's going to be something Additional, it's going to happen when he returns because there's going to be signed to the people here on earth because graves are going to be opened. Now, if I were to pass away today and go to be with Christ, people would not 
have to believe that, but if my grave was disturbed and I climbed up out of it, <clears throat> that's something you can't deny very easily, is it? Well, the Bible says <clears throat> in 1 Thessalonians 4, and we're reading verse 16, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, first the believers who have died will rise from their graves, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And there we will be with the Lord forever. Verse 18, so encourage each other with these words that I've just read. So I'm encouraging you today. I'm encouraging you that there is only one Savior. There has always only been one Savior. And he's not a man of flesh. It's God himself. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who came in the flesh, but was as much God as he was flesh while he was here on earth. But he is our Savior. He's our Savior. And not everybody understands that. And even in Jesus' day, they thought that Jesus had come to take over the government. And he hadn't. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He was establishing a kingdom, but it was a kingdom that wasn't just present because he was on the earth. It was an eternal kingdom. Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is our hope. He is our savior. Let's pray. God, we thank you today that our trust is in you, that even as the world changes around us, we don't need to be tipped over by that because the kingdom of God is not of this world. This is not our home. This earth, America, Arizona, Phoenix, Glendale, that's not my real home. That's a place I'm passing through. And although things around me may look like they're being shaken, you're never shaken because you're the rock that doesn't move. You're the place that I stand today. I stand in you, the eternal God of heaven, the one who I serve because he gave his life for me that I might be redeemed. So God, let us make sure that we're not shaken by the things of the world because we stand on a rock and that's you. The Bible says he who builds his, his uh, house on the sand, it's going to fall. But when you build on the rock, it's going to stand. And that's where we want our lives to be to proclaim that's where our lives are today. They're, they're being built on a rock that doesn't ever pass away. And Lord, we thank you for your kingdom and for where our hope should be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friend. Amen. Well, you know, when I face the camera towards me, or any of us do, that means that the writing on our shirts, if we have anything, is backwards. But it means I can see you and I can see your comments at the same time, friends. Now, listen, we got to look at the socks. Now, I have wore socks like this before. Let's take a look. But it's not the same. It's not the same sock. It's just the same, same kind of sock, I guess. Let's look. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. There it is. There it is. That's the Kraft macaroni and cheese sock. That's the Friday sock for today. Yes, indeed. All right, let's see who's on this morning. Alfredo, good morning to you. Christine, RJ, and Georgia. Joseph, good morning to you and to Rose. And there's Karen Hahn, and there's Mary and Joe Taylor this morning. Ed Sweeten. Amen. Focus Friday, Ed said. We could call it Focus Friday. That's a good name. That's a good name. There's. You've probably been thinking about that all week, haven't you, Ed? Ever since last week, I said, Friday doesn't really have a name. Maybe it's Focus Friday. Terry Guerrero in Nebraska. There's Al Poma this morning and V. Duffy. 
and D. Roush this morning, and Rose in Belize this morning, Don Jean, who lives in Belize once in a while, and in Phoenix the other once in a while. He's here at the moment. And Joe Helm, good morning to you. And LaVon, good morning, LaVon. God bless you all for tuning in this morning. Remember who the rock is. Let's not be shaken by the world. Because Jesus is the rock. He's the hope. He's the future. Amen? Susan Stewart, good morning to you. Well, that's it for everybody that I can see online at the moment. Thank you guys for joining me. God bless you and have an awesome day today in Jesus. A great weekend and Sunday should find you in church, friend. God bless. Bye-bye.